lot of the graphs and charts we've been talking about in this section about visualizing uncertainty or distributions in our data have used specific points in our data set. So we might be showing, say, the 95th confidence interval. We might be showing the median. We might be showing specific percentiles. But more recently, we've been seeing more and more graphs where uh, illustrators and designers and data visualization specialists are showing all of their data. And in today's video series, we have Cedric Shira here to describe the B-Swarm chart. The B-Swarm chart, as you're going to see, enables you to show all of the points in your data set. And of course, there's a lot of considerations when you do something like that. So I'm gonna turn it over to Cedric so he can explain how to use the chart and how to read it. Hi, John. Thanks again for inviting me to this cool project. I'm here today to talk about B-Swarm plots, a chart that I'm really excited about. But what are these? In B-Swarm plots, we visualize single data points along one axis, usually either horizontally or vertically, but it really doesn't matter. As in strip charts, we map the values to these axes, but we take care that the symbols are not overlapping and place them next to each other. While doing so, something like a tree emerges, or if you like, like a bee swarm that is flying around the hive. Since we are mapping the value only to one axis, the other axis emerges here as a count variable. So B swarm plots are a nice approach to visualize distributions as histograms or violin plots do, but they still allow to see the underlying raw data. So in this case, highlighting maybe gaps or other irregularities that might be covered by violin plots or histograms. One nice thing about B swarm plots besides showing the raw data is that you also can color them accordingly to different groups or adding summary statistics. You can even nicely combine them with box plots or wireline plots. One drawback of these plots is that if you have very skewed distributions or very large sample sizes, these might not end up looking that good, or if you are comparing groups, they might overlap, because these one plots can be used to show either one distribution or also nicely compare different distributions from different groups. So let's have a closer look how these look like. So here I compare the box plot, the wild plot, and the bee swarm plot. And while the box and the wild plots are hiding the sample sizes, or at least a bit, the bee swarm plot makes it very obviously that the group B only consists of four points here, so that we have very, very different sample sizes among groups. It also nicely illustrates the different shapes of distributions, range from uniform to normalized with outliers and also some modal distributions here. So bee swarm plots are a nice way to highlight these differences while keeping the information of the raw data. I'm a big fan of these plots and I've also used them back when I did my PhD defense already. So here on the left hand, this is a plot we published and we use the B-Swarm box plot combination to show the summary statistics but also highlight the high number of zero infected individuals in the scenarios that are here plotted orange and red. On the red right hand, I wanted to focus on the median value but still wanted to show the distribution instead of making too much effort for the reader to follow a box plot in the presentation style, I colored the median with a very bright color, but still added a grayish bee swarm in the back to show these interesting simulation results. So each dot represents one of 500 simulations per group. And while you might not be able to identify each single dot, it still gives you a nice idea of how the simulations um, worked out. One of my favorite examples here is one which merges both my interest in data with and in rap music. So Matt Daniels published this nice um, piece and article in the pudding. So make sure you click on the link because this plot is actually interactive. So what did he do? He decided to analyze the number of unique words used from famous web artists. And then he plotted these values along a horizontal x-axis. Since we have a big group of rappers that use around 4,000 unique words, you end up with this big blob in the middle. But you can see on the right hand, there are some rappers that use much more words in their texts. So please make sure to, to, to check it out because this is a nice example since each dot really represents one entity, a human being that is rapping. And you can hover over it and get more information about the artists, which I think is a nice use case for this. Another use case I want to show you is also published in the pudding and was done by Amanda Shendrook. Here she draw um, a B-Swarm plot 
and each dot shows a, a comic team from the DC or Marvel Universe. And in red, these are, these are teams that have more females than males. And in gray, those that have more males than females. And the third thing, which you directly can see, is that there are way more teams that are gray than red. So it's most common that these teams consist of more males than females. The second thing you can see that we have three, three particular groups, the male only, which is a very big group on the left hand, only gray of course, then the female only group on the right hand, which is much smaller than the, than the gray one on the left hand, and then in the middle where we have a 50-50 group. We can also see that between 0% females and 50% females, there's a lot of range of um, superhero groups that have more males than females, but on the other hand, between 50 and 100% female, there's not much going on. So there are the Birds of Prey, for example, and the A-Force, which have more females, but still male superheroes in their group. But most of them are either male dominated or female only. So that's it. Thank you again, John, for having me and see you soon. Bye bye. And thanks to Cedric for that great review of the Bee Swarm chart. It's become one of my favorite chart types. Of course, there is this consideration of you can only have so many data points in your data, right? A Bee Swarm chart with 100 or 200 points might look great, might show the outliers, might show the distribution. But a Bee Swarm chart with 10,000 points or 100,000 points probably isn't even going to fit on the page. So we might need to do some other considerations for that particular data set. Well, we're coming to the end of this section on showing your distribution in your data. So come back tomorrow and we'll wrap it up then.